Sam here from Sheridan Computers. I want to talk about Microsoft 365 and spam settings. Most companies probably leave the default spam settings in place or are simply unaware of the fact that there are many spam settings that you can tweak and tune. So I'm gonna take a look at how to do that and we'll walk through it. Before I do that, if you'd like to hire us, head across to our website at sheridan.co.uk, click on the hire us button, fill out the form, leave some details on what you're looking for and we will get back to you. If you do find this video useful, uh, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If you hit the notifications icon, you will receive notifications of any new videos as they are released. Um, we, are, we do provide the full range of Microsoft 365 services, so if you do need any help with that, give us a shout. So let's um, go and take a look. In order to find these spam settings, log into your um, Office 365 portal and click on the admin. And then we want to go down to show all and we want the security center which takes you to protection.office.com uh, once you're at protection.office.com if we go down to threat management and policies we've got various policies that we configure so i'm going to go through of more of these policies on separate videos this one's literally going to cover anti-spam so if we click on the anti-spam policy as you can see, there are default policies in place. Now, I generally don't uh, edit the default policies. I'll leave them there, and I tend to create new policies. Uh, it's just a, I don't know, I prefer a cleaner way of doing it. So to create a new policy, we're going to create an inbound one. Um, you can see there is a default spam filter policy and a default outbound spam filter policy. Let's create a new one. Um, and we'll call this uh, company inbound spam policy and for the description you don't need to enter a description um, override default spam policy settings um, so the first section we've got is spam and bulk actions so if we're going to spam and bulk actions um, detected spam we have the option to move it to a junk email folder we also have the options of adding headers, uh, prepending subject lines, or quarantining the message, or delete. I generally suggest that you leave this to move to junk email. Um, some people do prefer to quarantine messages, but I don't know, it's easier for me, I find, if I leave it to uh, move messages to junk email folder. Uh, quarantining basically adds an, ext an extra step and complicates things a bit further for end users. Um, and again, high, high confidence spam. Um, you can delete, quarantine, um, move to junk. Phishing email, quarantine them. Um, high confidence phishing emails, you can leave them quarantined, uh, move to junk. And then we've got bulk emails. So move message to junk email folder. And again, we've got the same settings. We can add, ed add headers to them. Um, we can prepend subject lines. We can delete them or quarantine them. I generally leave these at default. Um, select the threshold, one being uh, most aggressive, uh, nine allowing the most to be delivered. Uh, I generally set this around six. Um, retain spam for 30 days, obviously only applies if you have quarantine settings. Uh, safety tips generally leave on and zero auto purge um, this basically uh, allows messages to be zero hour auto uh, auto purge protects your users by automatically taking your policies actions on spam or fish if it's detected after delivery so you generally want to leave that on um, scroll down a bit under allow lists so allow sender and allow domain. So if you want to uh, always have email delivered from specific senders and bypass spam policies, uh, spam um, policies, you can do allow sender and you can just enter the email address. Um, similarly, if you want to allow entire domains to bypass the spam policies, then you can also add domains in. Um, in the same way that allow lists work, we also have block lists. Uh, so if you want to block a specific email sender, you can enter the email address there. If you'd like to block an entire domain, again, you can edit um, this section and put the list of domains in. 
Um, international spam. So, filter email message written in the following languages. Uh, you can edit this and um, choose a language. So, filter email messages when written in the following languages. Um, so, hit something, you can set this to um, Arabic, for example. Um, you know, if you're not expecting messages in those languages, um, Russian, whatever, you can add them in and they will be um, blocked as well. Uh, filter messages sent from the following countries or regions. So as opposed to blocking um, emails written in specific languages, you can also go through and you can um, block all messages um, originating from Russia, for example. So these are generally good settings that you'll want to apply. Um, if you're not expecting emails from them countries, it can reduce the spam quite a lot. Uh, and then we've got uh, spam properties. So we can increase the spam score on um, specific email types by editing these. So you can basically set it to, if image link contain links to remote sites, um, increase the spam score. Uh, URL, URL redirects directs to um, other ports. Again, um, you can increase the score on that. Uh, numeric IP addresses only detected in the URL. Um, if you're not expecting people to be sending you URLs with, with IP addresses in it, um, then yes, you can block them as well. And you can uh, increase the spam score of um, biz or info websites. Mark as spam. Specify messages to mark that include these uh, properties. So, uh, many of these you should probably set to on. Empty uh, messages, you wouldn't need to receive them. You, you can set that to on. Uh, embedded tags in HTML, uh, JavaScript or VB script in, in HTML, so you'd want to turn them on. Um, form tags, generally you wouldn't have uh, form tags in HTML. Um, iframes, web bugs, object tags, um, and apply sensitive words. Again, it's up to you, but most of them you should probably uh, want to enable. So SPF uh, record hard fail. This is one that I'd recommend that you turn on. Um, basically, this will, if a server is not permitted to send email from a specific domain, then it will fail straight away. So that's definitely um, an important one to turn on. NDR backscatter is related to uh, non-delivery ports. Um, if turning that on as well will reduce... Um, issues with backscatter from um, non-delivery ports. Now we have various options to test the emails if we don't want to, if we want to do that before setting them live. Um, and then applied to section. The applied to section basically specifies uh, under what conditions these rules will apply. So add condition and recipient domain is, and then you simply put your domain name in. So stick your domain name in um, and then you can exclude as well if you want to so let me cancel that in the same way that we can create inbound spam policies we can also create um, outbound spam policies so let's take a look at what we have under there so if we create an outbound spam policy well an outbound policy um, company Outbound spam policy, optional description, override, default spam settings, and the uh, settings that we have down here. Under the first category, we have notifications. So this is a useful um, option to have enabled. Send a copy of suspicious outbound email messages to specific people. Um, so you can uh, put your support email address in, for example, and if a mailbox is found to be sending outbound spam, it will notify you. Now, this is quite handy to have in case of mailbox takeovers and things. Uh, and you can also get notified if um, a sender is blocked due to sending outbound spam. Um, we've got recipient limits. So your recipient limits. Um, basically, you can set threshold of messages that are sent an hour. Um, per mailbox or messages that are sent per day, for example. And these are quite a sensible option to set up. So you, 
it depends on um, how much traffic and uh, email your users are sending. So you analyze that and set this to sensible defaults. For example, um, 75 emails per mailbox sent within an hour. Uh, this is external, sorry, and you can do this internal as well. So 75 internal and a daily limit of, I don't know, 750. Um, so you can pick the default, uh, pick the settings there that you want. And once those thresholds have been exceeded, uh, you can restrict the user from sending mail until the following day. Um, or you can just restrict them from sending uh, mail altogether. Or you can do no action and just receive an alert. So these are really handy to have and can help you spot, uh, spot taking over mailboxes fairly quickly. Uh, automatic forwarding. Now, if you have no reason to have emails forwarded, forwarded outside of your domain, then you should probably turn this off. So turn it off, forwarding is disabled. Um, one common technique that people use when they take over a mailbox is they set up rules to forward replies to an external address. Um, and this kind of helps mitigate that. And again, applied to. So what we want to do here is uh, specify users, groups, or domains who this policy uh, applies to. So we do add the sending domain is, and again in here, you would put in your domain. And you put exceptions in if you want. Um, once you've done that, save it. And then you have your anti-spam settings set up a bit more tighter than they um, are by default. There's a lot of settings that you can tweak and uh, change around and just make more sense. So I definitely suggest that you take a look at these. Um, once you have a play with them, there are a few more things that you can get into. Um, spoof intelligence, um, you can play with them. Connection, um, filter policies, so basically you can... Um, Always accept messages from the following IP addresses or block messages from the following IP addresses. There's quite a lot to play with in there. Um, that's about it for regards to doing the anti-spam settings. I'm going to do a video on the other settings um, separately. Let me switch back. So if you haven't already taken a look at the settings that are available with regards to spam within Microsoft 365, um, I'd highly suggest that you do. It can just make life so much easier and it's um, a lot less to deal with. And the more you can protect your users, the better. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can hire us by heading over to our website at sheridan.co.uk and clicking on the Hire Us button. Uh, we work with Office a lot, obviously. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.